second ER nurse interview. I will be doing this e interview at my place of employment currently where I work as an ER tech. Um, the questions um, that most jobs ask are situational and behavioral, so I've been kind of rehearsing those, especially since my last video that I put up for you guys that I felt like I completely botched some of the questions. So I've been working on those. I'm going to be very early. It starts at 1 p.m. Um, so I will hopefully find a mirror so I can show you guys my whole outfit. But I have like a white shirt with flower prints or something on it and then a black jacket and black pants. So wish me luck. Wish me luck. You guys, I think I'm gonna be an ER nurse. <sighs> All right, hey you guys. So I wanted to make this video while everything is still fresh in my head. I just came back from my second ER nurse residency interview. Um, I interviewed at my current place of work. Uh, top three tips. Number one is to prepare yourself. Go online. I will come up with a video or a Google Doc or a blog post um, that I will link in the description box below um, of a lot of typical 
introduction questions, behavioral questions, and situational questions. So when you look at these questions, think and reflect on your past work experiences. They really want to hear healthcare experiences or past clinical experiences if you don't currently work in a healthcare facility. So preparing yourself includes looking at these questions and reminiscing on all of the different tasks and situations you've been involved in and how that will help the specific department that you are looking for. So for a lot of my situational and behavioral questions, I related it to critical patients um, when I've had multiple patients at one time, when there are a lot of tasks that I had to do at one time and get them completed. Uh, so number one, prepare yourself. Look through the questions, get an idea. I actually typed out all of my responses on a Google Doc and reviewed it over and over. So when I was asked any of these questions, I could find a story to go with the specific question. Number two is to bring copies of your resume, cover letter, and um, letters of recommendation. I also personally included um, my transcript. So I included everything that a job application asked for. So they asked for the resume, the cover letter, your transcript or nursing GPA, and letters of recommendation. So I will show you guys my portfolio that I use for that. All right. So this is the portfolio that I used. Um, it has, let's see if I can make it clear for you guys. It's just like a covered, it's a clear cover, um, but inside I have my resume and then next is my cover letter. Ooh. Resume, cover letter, um, this is my transcript and then I also have three letters of recommendation. So this was really helpful. My, um, my managers already had a copy of all of these things because the recruiter printed it out for them so they each had their own copy but I brought this and set it on my desk and on my table in front of me just in case they did ask for it or asked hey what is that I had um, I think I made eight copies of them just to hand out in case anyone asked for them sometimes they'll give it back to you sometimes you can just let them know they can keep it um, so that is a good tool to have um, number three is to remain calm. If you're like me, you get really nervous. Um, I'm very anxious. I actually hate public speaking. It's a lot easier talking to you guys through a camera. Um, but I have just like personal issues with coming. I overthink things. And after I say something, I pay attention to the faces and the reactions that people are make are making and sometimes I misread those or overanalyze those. So I just focused on remaining calm and speaking very fluidly. So what they want to see, especially in nurse interviews, really inter any interview that you go to, but especially nurse interviews and ER specifically, they want to see that you can carry on a conversation. They wanna see that you can talk to someone who may be difficult to talk to, someone you may be nervous to talk to, um, and they wanna really see your communication skills because that what is what nursing is all about. It's all about communication. So talk fluidly, think through your answers. Silence sometimes is not your enemy, it's your friend. So if they read you a long question, which a lot of these questions were very long, um, I just took a break, um, I, showed my thinking process. When I think, I naturally look up and to the right. Um, that's what a lot of people do, actually. It's a human behavior, but my psychology aside. Um, so take time to think about it, make little mental notes in your head, and then answer the question. Um, some other interview tips that I found really helpful were that during the situation and behavior questions, type questions, um, they want you to follow a method that describes the event um, or situation, the action that you took, and then the results that happen from you taking those actions. So for one example, I talked about going above and beyond for a patient. So I started with the event and then went, from, went to the action and the result. So I said I was working with a patient whose cultural and religious practices were 
in conflict with having a male provider perform the pelvic exam that she needed. Um, she was very modest, very reserved. Her husband was right by her side at all times and she was refusing this exam that we needed to perform. Um, that was critical to her care. She was actually having a threatened miscarriage and in order to verify that and make sure that she is not having any excessive bleeding or retaining any tissue and seeing if tissue is coming out, um, we needed to do that pelvic exam. So at the time we only had two male providers in that area. Um, after the provider left and explained all the risks and benefits of her having the procedure versus not having the procedure, um, I kind of talked to her and her husband one-on-one -on -one and asked them if they would be more comfortable with a female performing the exam just so we could screen her appropriately and do the appropriate tests and diagnostics to make sure that she was medically clear to be discharged. Um, she agreed to having a female provider. I went and discussed um, the situation and conversation that I had with that patient and then we were able to find a female provider from another area in the emergency department to come and perform the pelvic exam. We were able to get the diagnostics and tests that we needed and also as a result she felt more comfortable um, with her care. Um, she felt kind of that interpersonal connection and I was able to develop a rapport with her and her family member, her husband actually, and she was very thankful for that. Um, I've just seen that taking those little steps that may seem inconvenient or minute to some people will make the world of a difference to a patient. So that was my above and beyond. I had my event. Um, that I described in detail. I was an ECA. This was the patient's background. This is what was happening. The action that I took was having that one-on-one -on -one conversation with her and then relaying that information to the provider. And then the result was that she got the care she needed and she felt comfortable and confident in the hospital that we work at, which will in turn allow her to return to our facility if there is anything that she needs and she will choose us as her healthcare provider. Um, so I just really wanted to show you guys um, an example of a question that I answered. There's a lot of different questions. I really need to go back and jot them down, um, but always ask questions at the, inter at the end of the interview as well. Um, do your research on the hospital. Are they trauma certified? Are they a stroke center? Are they, do they have outstanding um, TPA administration times for stroke. What is their, what is a normal stroke and sepsis and STEMI protocol? Um, especially in the ER, those are important things to know. Um, what else? Let's see. So knowing your protocols, if you are aware of those, if not, kind of read up on, I know in the ER, sepsis, stroke, STEMI, um, respiratory distress, stuff like that are a lot of things that we do see. Um, and then at the end, ask them, um, when would I hear back? How am I evaluated as a new graduate nurse? How often am I evaluated as a new graduate nurse? Um, I asked for my specific situation, what are some benefits and challenges that you see nurse techs having transitioning from the technician role to the nursing role? Um, so that just kind of gave, gave off the vibe that I was excited to start working where I already work and excited to develop my career. Um, but yeah, I will be back with a, another nurse interview video for you guys very, very soon. And I hope that you guys enjoyed this. Please let me know what you would like to see next. And I will see you in my next video. Bye. <sighs> okay, you guys. So I just got the call. I'm going to be a registered ER nurse and my makeup is everywhere. I'm driving home from Fuzzies um, to I went for drinks with my boyfriend after and I got the call on the way home. <laughs> I'm gonna be, wow, I'm going to be an ER nurse. It's fucking surreal. <sighs> I...
I couldn't even say yes without crying. But everyone, I think he put me on speaker because he's like, are you okay? I'm like, yeah, I'm just shocked. I'm just shocked. But I'm going to be an ear nurse. What the fuck? So what I immediately did after getting off the phone was call my mom. Um, before telling her, I gathered myself, I tried to FaceTime her, and thankfully she answered. Um, my mom has been one of my biggest supporters throughout this journey, and it meant so much to me to tell her that all of her hard work putting me through school since I was a little girl um, and just emphasizing education and that knowledge is power and something that can never be taken from us. I just wanted to share this moment with her. And as you guys can see, I absolutely ugly cried. Um, I am not a cute crier, but I just wanted to show you guys like the real raw footage of what it feels like to get the job of your absolute dreams after working so hard. If I can do it, you guys can do it. I wish you all the best of luck and I just want to thank you so much for supporting me as well. Um, just thank you.